The next step in the reaction is a reduction of benzyl. So we react this molecule with sodium borohydride. Now the first part of the reduction involves this hydride attacking one of the carbonyls. At this moment, when the reduction occurs, the hydride is not selective for any of these carbonyl carbons. So it could attack this carbonyl or this carbonyl. It doesn't really matter at this point. Now typically when you see this kind of reaction, the first part is the hydride attacking the carbonyl carbon and breaking the double bond, and the pi electrons get pushed onto this oxygen right here. However, what actually happens is the double bond will form a bond with this boron atom right here, and the result of that is this intermediate. Now remember that this molecule is actually three-dimensional, so I've gone ahead and drawn these wedged and dashed lines to indicate the three-dimensionality of the molecule. Also remember that single bonds can rotate. This is important because after we perform this first reduction, this will cause the molecule to rotate along this single bond to form a stable three-dimensional conformation. And remember, we can view that type of conformation using a Newman projection. In this case, we will be looking looking at this molecule down this axis. So what I've gone ahead and done here is converted this projection of the molecule into a Newman projection. And as you can see right here, you have these bulky phenyl groups that create steric hindrance for this molecule. So what's going to happen is it's going to form multiple conformations until it reaches the most stable one. There are actually three different conformations that can be formed after the the first reduction. So we can get confirmation A, confirmation B, or confirmation C. As you can see right here, the molecule is going to arrange itself in the most stable Newman projection, and the most stable confirmation is the third structure right here, confirmation C. And this is because the bulky phenyl groups are furthest away from each other, so this has the least amount of steric hindrance, or torsional structure. Strain. So now that we've figured out that this is the most stable conformation that will form, the second reduction of this carbonyl will occur, and it will occur or this hydride will attack the carbonyl carbon, and the pi electrons right here will form a bond with this boron, just as we've seen in the first reduction. The result of that reduction forms this intermediate right here, and as you can see now, the phenyl groups are now opposite one another. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to visualize what the molecule looks like in this Newman projection. So what I've gone ahead and done here is converted the Newman projection into a Haworth projection. Now the last step to complete this reduction is to react this molecule with water. This will get rid of the BH2 group and fully convert the carbonyls into hydroxyl groups. Now as you can see here, the OHs are in the cis position, and the stereoisomer that's formed here is the mesostereoisomer. Now the mesostereoisomer is a special type of stereoisomer where the molecule can have two or more chirality centers, but its mirror image is actually superimposable with itself. So if we convert this projection into our typical bond line structure, we would see that this is actually an achiral molecule, because if we take the mirror image of this hydrobenzoin molecule, you would see that the mirror image, if we were to flip it, is actually the same. So so they can stack on top of each other or they superimpose on one another. So therefore, it's not chiral, it is achiral. And this is a special type of achiral molecule called the meso compound or a mesostereoisomer. So just as a quick recap, when we react benzyl with sodium borohydride, this will produce the mesostereoisomer. So this shows that this reduction reaction is stereoselective because it produces a specific type of stereoisomer.